<clears throat> so, right, what we're talking about. Um, a lot of people asked me on my the last video that I posted where I got attacked by some dogs. Um, a lot of people in the comments were asking for a follow-up, asking if I was okay and wanting to know what's happened at the time and what's happened since and all that stuff. So, uh, so I thought I'd do a quick video just to kind of give people an update if they're interested. Yeah, this happened about a week ago now. I was out for a ride um, around an area that I haven't ridden before. The intention for that ride was just to kind of explore. I was on the way back, really. I was sort of heading home at that point. And I was basically looking for a cut through that avoided riding on the road. <clears throat> so I'm going down this road and uh, looking for a way through, basically. And then I come across these people. The woman suddenly just shout. I mean, I came around the corner and then saw them like last minute. So I didn't like see them coming up for miles away. I didn't see the dogs until they were running at me. If I'd have seen three big dogs off, off their leads in the distance, I would have probably stopped and thought twice about going that way. Although I'm not going, all over, I'm all over the place here. So apologies. Just trying to, still trying to kind of get it straight in my own head. It's a weird experience. So, I mean, I suppose I should stay. I love dogs. I've got nothing against, I'm not one of these people who's inherently scared of dogs or wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I love dogs. I've never owned a dog myself, but I know plenty of people who have. So uh, I've got nothing against the dogs themselves. They're just doing dog stuff. Although, at the time, I thought the dogs were German Shepherds, but they weren't. They were Belgian Shepherds or Malinois, or however you say it. Malinois. Um, and I've since <coughs> learned that those dogs are likely to be the next breed added to the dangerous dogs list. So, out of all the, <laughs> out of all the dogs I could have come in, uh, had an encounter with, I probably got one of the worst. So those Belgian Malinois commonly used by like police forces and special forces and prisons around the world because they are very aggressive they can run very fast and for very uh, long distances they can jump something like eight to ten feet in the air so i'm on this ride and i've been out for about an hour and a half i'm about half an hour away from home um i'm trying to find a cut through shortcut to where i need to be so i go down this service road at the back the service road at the back of the industrial estate that I was riding through. Didn't see the people or the dogs really until the last minute. So I didn't realise there were dogs there loose off the leads until I was right up on them basically. And the woman started shouting for me to stop. Which I did because in my mind I was thinking okay... These dogs aren't, you know, I did, the last thing I expected was for the dogs to bite me. I thought they were just, you know, doing normal dog stuff, being excited, and they were gonna run up and maybe jump up me a bit and kind of, you know, just be playful. So yeah, they so they ran up and the woman had shouted to stop, so I did, and I tried to say, stay sort of still and calm, because I thought if I panic, the dogs are going to, you know, their prey drive is gonna kick in. Um, I don't know, I don't know much about dogs really. I don't, um, but I, <clears throat> I didn't think they were gonna attack me. And I thought if they were going to be aggressive, then my best chance was to just stay calm and the owners would get them on leads under control in a second or two. Um, but they just immediately started attacking me. <laughs> there were three dogs in total. One was a, a German Shepherd or an Alsatian or whatever. I don't know the difference, to be honest. That dog did seem to be... Well, at first it seemed to be out of control because I think it was the first dog that bit me. I'm not sure because um, some of the bites that I received are on the back side, you know, on the back of my body and I didn't necessarily know what was going on behind me. But that dog did kind of stop. When it was shouted at by its owner, it, it kind of moved away. Although it was still like aggressive and barking, it moved back. But the other two dogs, the, the younger dogs, the Malinois, they just, they weren't, they were out of control. And they just started, uh, biting me and i thought okay well let's just this hurts but you know the owners will have them under control in a second they'll get them off me straight away and that'll be it and i think at first i think the first couple of bites didn't really hurt too much because they kind of nipped me but then they, they actually grabbed hold of my uh, mountain bike trousers. They weren't grabbing hold of my skin. So they were just like tugging on my trousers. So I wasn't too panicked at that point because I wasn't in a, I wasn't in a lot of pain, not serious pain anyway. And, um, and I thought, okay, well, we'll just stay calm while they get this under control. And of course they didn't get it under control. It was almost farcical, the attempt 
made to get the dogs under control. The woman came bumbling over and then just like fell over the dogs and the dogs just sort of, you know, dodged her and got around her and that. And she just was, it was just ridiculous really. And then I'm starting to think in my mind at this point, oh shit, this should have been over like already and it's not they're still biting me and at this point now they'd kind of started to circle around me so they started off both on the on my left hand leg and then the woman come running in that side and just kind of fell over they then started to move around out of her way and to kind of get around me so i'm off my bike at this point trying to kind of <laughs> trying to put my bike in between myself and the dogs but Obviously, e-bikes are pretty heavy and they're not the most manoeuvrable things. But I'm trying to kind of use the bike like a bit of a shield. Anyway, uh, it was freezing cold that day. So I was quite numb <laughs> because of how cold it was. So I guess the bites that were landing, they were hurting, but they weren't like, you know, it was like a level of pain that I thought, I can, I can stand this level of pain. I don't need to panic yet. And so I was just thinking, okay, well, just stay calm, stay on my feet. They'll be under control any second now. <laughs> Uh, it took a while to get them under control, but they did in the end. I couldn't really tell where I'd been bitten. Like, after it happened, the main pain was in my left arm. Really, really hurt. Right in the sort of inside of my elbow. Really painful. Um, I couldn't really feel anything else. So I didn't know how hurt, how hurt I was, really. I was sore, but it was kind of just a nondescript soreness kind of all over me. They got the dogs under control. I mean, and, this, and then after the video that I posted ends, they didn't. I know a lot of people said, oh, they walked off. They didn't walk off. Well, they, they, <laughs> well, I think they would have if I hadn't have stopped them. But they did stop, and I did eventually get contact details out of them and everything. So I've got all their information. People don't need to go doxing these people, and they are quite easy to find. So don't do that, please. Um, I know who they are. I've got all their information, and I, I can't say really any details about what's happening or happened since, but just trust me that it's being sorted. So, uh, yeah, it was a shit experience. I wouldn't recommend it. Oh, a few, few people in the comments were like, oh, this is bullshit. Uh, you know, there's no damage to the bike. There's no damage to blah, blah, blah. All that f toss. Um, you're right, there was no damage to the bike. Um, the only damage to equipment that happened was to my clothes. So my trousers, my I had some like protective socks on underneath the trousers. They were damaged. And my jersey. Trousers took the brunt of it. I can put some photographs in here to show the various rips and tears uh people going oh yeah bullshit never he never got hurt right okay well i mean i don't know if you can see that that's that's one of the least severe bites but you can see the bruising hopefully in this light maybe and this is a week after as well bear in mind this is a week after it happened. And the rest of the bites are on my legs and arse, which I'm probably not gonna show you on YouTube videos, so. You'll have to use your imagination. Um, they only broke the skin, <clears throat> I think, in two places. One was on the back of my knee, and one was on my arse cheek. Yeah, anyway, aftermath. It happened, I got the details. They eventually got the dogs under control. I don't know how badly I'm hurt at this point, but I'm in some pain, but not like, I can still stand and I can still move around and that, but my left arm in particular was really hurting and I'm like holding my arm. And the guy goes, do you wanna check what, you know, check what you, what the damage is? And bear in mind, it's like minus three, it's really cold. And I've got loads of layers on. Luckily I've got loads of layers on, because if I didn't have them, I'd have been f fucked basically. And I'm, I just like, no, I don't wanna get all my gear off in the middle of nowhere. Like while it's freezing cold, I'm just gonna leave basically. I went off to ride home. Now I'd got about four miles to go to get back. Um, so I rode back the way I came down the dirt road. And, uh, but by that point I'd started to shake kind of uncontrollably. So I couldn't, I was really struggling to just ride the bike on, like just normally just ride. I think, I think that was just the adrenaline. So I had to stop and kind of try to gather myself because I, you know, I knew I'd got fair distance to cover to get back. So I stopped and I rang my girlfriend and I said, You'll never guess what. I've just been chewed on by some dogs. And she was like, what? And then when I got home later on, she she, t she said to me, oh, I thought you'd just been attacked by like a Bichon freeze or something and you were just exaggerating. And I was like, mm, well, check this video out. So yeah, so I got back um, and, and I was actually, I'd, I'd, the ride had started from my parents. I'd gone to visit them and ride around the area 
that they live in and then the intention was to go back to theirs after the ride hang out with them for a bit and then come home so i got back to their house walked in and they were like you're all right and i went yeah i've just been attacked by dogs and they were like ha, 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 that's funny and i went no really and they were like really and i was like yeah really and they were like really and i was like yeah really and they were like are you all right and i was like i don't know so i stood in my mum and dad's kitchen and stripped off basically down to my pants and they were like oh my god oh my god what happened <laughs> um and we had to so we had to take stock of my wounds at that point now i'm starting to warm up at this at this juncture because i've got back in i've got into the house it's it's quite warm and i'm in the kitchen they're cooking so it's quite warm and i'm took my gear off and i'm starting to slowly get the feeling back in my body parts from being out in the freezing cold and and i'm starting to think oh oh that hurts oh that hurts a bit oh that's quite painful we uh we had a little we had a little look my mum helped thanks mum <laughs> she uh kind of just checked me over and was like oh god you're gonna have to go to the hospital you're gonna have to go to the hospital you've got blood and stuff and i'm like oh i said yeah okay well i'll, I'll, I'll go to the hospital but i'm not going to the hospital straight away i'll go i'll go later on um they're like do you want do you want still want your dinner and i was like uh yeah i think so yeah yeah and they were like go and have a shower and get yourself cleaned up and that and i was like okay so i went up to, <laughs> went up to the bathroom to have a shower and i got in the shower and i was like oh oh i feel a bit well i feel a bit faint um jesus christ these tires have took a beating i started yes yeah, so i was in the shower and uh the hot you know i warming up at this point start everything's starting to hurt and i just started to feel really really faint and i'm like oh sort of wobbling around in the shower thinking shit am i gonna pass out here I didn't, um, but I felt very, very woozy and very sick. <clears throat> so yeah, I came back down. I was like, oh, "Is it all right if we? Is it all right if I don't have dinner just yet? Because I feel a bit, I feel a bit unwell." And they were like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll wait. We'll pause it for a bit." So yeah, so I just uh, kind of like had to wait really till I started feeling you know, to the sort of sick feeling passed, which it did eventually, and um, and then I was able to eat something. So I had I had my dinner and. Um, and then I felt a lot better after eating something and I didn't throw it up, although I thought I might at first. But yeah, ate something, that made me feel less sick. Um, but like as time went by and as the adrenaline wore off more and more and as I got warmer and warmer in the house, like more and more things started to hurt. It was weird because we'd identified, or we'd, we thought we had identified all of the bite marks and things and all the bruising but i'm like getting pains in it in different places where i know i haven't been bitten for definite like my, my right shoulder the back of my right shoulder it's really really hurting and i'm like god what's wrong with my shoulder I, and i know for a fact i haven't been bitten on my shoulder yeah anyway i go home my, my girlfriend's mum's a, a nurse so of course anytime there's an injury or anything she's uh consulted which is useful and my girlfriend's like right mum says you've got to go and get you've got to go to the hospital you've got to be seen you've got you know you've got to have uh, an injection and blah 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 blah. and i'm like yeah yeah, yeah. all right I'll, i will i will i'm i was like i was at this point i was really tired like because i think after the adrenaline wore off i was just completely knackered and i was like yeah yeah all right well i'll i'll go tomorrow and she's like no you've got to go now and i'm like oh, okay all right i'll go to like the walking clinic there's a walking clinic in the town that i live in so i thought right, i'll go up there went up there it's about 10 o'clock by this point on the night i get to the, the door and that and i'm they're like what do you want <laughs> and i'm like i've been bitten by a dog and they were like right well you better get to a and e then and i was like oh i just think i need a tetanus injection or whatever and they're like, yeah, we can't do that. You need to get to A&E. And I'm like, fuck's sake, all right. So I get in the car and I drive up to the A&E and uh, I'm thinking this is going to be fun. Um, so I go into the A&E. I don't know if you've been to an A&E recently, but now you can't just go straight up to the uh, reception and kind of go, help, I need medical assistance, please. Before you're allowed to approach the reception desk, you have to go to this like self-service touchscreen kiosk thing and fill in this massive questionnaire about what's wrong with you kind of like uh, uh, just like this stupid questionnaire 
So you put in your date of birth and your postcode and all that kind of crap. And then it starts asking you about what's wrong with you. And it's like, you know, all these, I've got, you know, I can't breathe, I feel faint, I've got, a, I'm bleeding, you know, da 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 da. And he kind of just narrows it down for you. So you go like, I've been bitten by an animal or a human. And then you go down that road of, you go down the road of those questions. <laughs> some of the things, some of the things it's asking you are just pointless because if, you were in the position where you were answering yes to any of those things. Well, you wouldn't be uh, conscious to use the touchscreen thing. You know, it's asking you things like, is there a bone sticking out of your flesh? Or have you... One of the questions, I swear to God, I even took a photo of it because I was that... Um, I thought it was that ridiculous. Was, um, have any of your limbs been bitten off? <clears throat> uh, <laughs> you know... Anyway, so I finished filling in this stupid thing, and, uh, and then I can then I'm allowed to approach the reception desk. So I do. Now at the moment, at the same time, I'm looking around this room, this A and E waiting room, and it is fucking rammed to the rafters. It is there's people, you know, there's no seats. There are people standing up, leaning against walls. There's people sitting on the floors. Uh, it's carnage, and um, it. There's, you know, it's mostly full of kids that are screaming and crying and have various illnesses, I guess, and fretting parents. Um, so I got to the reception and uh, she's like, hello, can I take, you know, what's the problem? And I went, I've been bitten by a dog and uh, I think I need a tetanus shot. And she's like, yeah, okay. And then she starts asking me all the same questions that I've just been asked by this bloody touchscreen thing. And I'm like, what's the point? Why, why are we doing this again? Uh, is this just to, just to kill time? So she starts asking me all these questions and we're going through them and that. And then I, just, I just stopped her and I was like, look, hang on, before we go through any more questions, I said, how long am I likely to be waiting here? Um, and she's like, oh, uh, it's going to be at least five hours. I'm like, fuck that noise. I'll go to, I'll, I'll just take my chances. I'll take my chances, thanks. Tetanus can't be that bad. Um, so I leave that godforsaken place because uh, there's no way I'm sitting around for five hours. I'll probably end up coming out with COVID as well as everything else. So the plan now is to try and get an appointment <clears throat> with the doctor or, or with the nurse probably the next day, which miraculously, I don't know how, um, we just spam called the surgery until we got through. And they were pretty good. They like went, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, you need to come see us. Um, come round in an hour. So I'm like, okay. So I go around there uh, an hour later and, just, and um, I see the nurse, not a doctor. And of course I get to show her my ample buttocks, which she's very impressed with, she says. And she probably says that to all her patients. But yeah, I get to show her my bottom and uh, after she's gathered herself after that experience. And then she's like, right, okay, we need to give you a tetanus injection now. Uh, I get a tetanus injection, that hurt quite a bit. And then I get uh, a load of antibiotics. Uh, blah, 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 blah. If you get any swelling, infection, you know, if it starts, if the wound starts going green and it starts to smell really, you know, all the usual gross stuff. And I'm like, yep, yep, yep. I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on it. And she's like, okie doke, come back later on today and collect your um, antibiotics. Take three a day for the next seven days. Don't miss any, don't, you know, even if you feel okay, complete the course. And I'm like, yep, cool. So I go back later on that day and I get my prescription and, uh, all the while, what's weird is as time's going by, I'm the pain is becoming more and more. Um, I mean, it's not it's not unbearable, but I'm, there's more and more things that are starting to ache and sting. I think this was like the day after. By the day after that, I'd started taking. I'd just I'd only taken one antibiotic because of the time of the day that I got them. But the day after that, I felt absolutely awful, like really achy, just really tired and just hor just horrible. And then the day after that, I got a bit of a fever, started to get a temperature. I was really sweaty, but also felt cold all the time. So I had to go back to the urgent care place and I told them what had happened. And I said, look, I've been told to keep an eye on this. And if I started to feel worse to kind of come and see somebody. And they were like, yeah, yeah, you did the right thing. How long have you been on your antibiotics for? And I was like, started taking them 
yesterday or whatever I can't believe I can't remember but yeah I've took a few um, and they were like right okay well you need to basically you need to give them three to five days three to five days to take a f to properly take effect and I'm like okay so so what do we do now and they went keep taking your paras uh, keep taking your antibiotics take paracetamol for the temperature ibuprofen for the swelling and if you don't feel any better by sort of the end of the week come back and come back and see us basically or go and see GP or whatever I'm like okie okay, doke that was it really and uh, I spent the next few days pretty much mostly in or hovering around my bed feeling like generally like shit felt really fluey it was weird it was like I had, a, I had kind of like the flu but without the head cold part so I had all the like achy sort of achy joints and horrible kind of crappy feeling symptoms but yeah so anyway uh, but it started to ease off a bit by about thursday night i guess um and then start to feel a bit better on better better still on friday and uh and now i'm feeling pretty much back to normal the, <laughs> funnily enough the thing that hurts the most now is where they injected me with the tetanus that's been absolutely killing that sight that that part of my arm has been really really painful ever since they did it so I don't recommend tetanus injections, they hurt. Well, I do recommend them if you need them, but yeah, they're not they're not fun. Yeah, so that's the that's the story pretty much. Um that's what happened. Uh I'm all right. Thanks for asking those that did. Um I will obviously on the advice of many uh Americans be getting myself a Glock or a 44 Magnum. Um, which I will be, I'll probably both actually. I'll probably get both. I might even get an AR-15. In fact, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two AR-15s, like handlebar mounted like that, with a single like, uh, with, I'm going to link the triggers together so that if I get approached by a dog or anybody or a, or a liberal, I can just, you know, unload. I'm going to get the extended magazines as well so I can have 100 rounds, bump stocks fitted so I can, you know, so I can fire fully automatic. And yeah, I'll just, um, yeah, I'll just uh, use that to protect myself in future. Ooh. That mod derailleur is absolutely buggered. Fun times. I might be able to look at that little clutchy clutch. What the fuck is going on? 